This video will show an example of computing the absolute statistical entropy of a substance from its uh, statistical mechanical partition functions. So in this video, what our goal is, is to calculate the molar entropy for oxygen gas at 298 Kelvin and one bar. Okay, from our previous videos on entropy and statistical mechanics, we said that the entropy is equal to the Boltzmann constant times the temperature times the partial derivative of the natural log of the partition function with respect to t plus the natural log of the partition function. The partition function was equal to a sum over all the states of a system of e to the minus energy of that state divided by the Boltzmann constant times temperature. So we did this in the statistical mechanics chapter for translational, rotational, vibrational, and electronic energy levels of a given uh, atom or molecule. So the molar entropy is going to be a sum of the molar entropy of translation, rotation, vibration, and electronic energy levels. All right, so we also see that in virtually every case we get that the entropy for all of these it ends up being proportional to the number of particles times the Boltzmann constant because the Boltzmann constant is out in front and uh, the number of particles will show up in there for a system of n uh, particles as we'll see. So nk is equal to the num uh, nr, n being the number of particles, little n being the number of moles, kb the Boltzmann constant, and r the gas constant. So the molar entropy is equal to the entropy divided by the number of moles, which is going to be proportional to nr over n, which is going to be proportional to the gas constant r. So I'm going to express these all in terms of the molar entropy divided by r, and then we'll throw r back in at the end. So the molar entropy of translations divided by r, uh, if you look from our formulas from the previous uh, video on this, will be 5 halves plus 3 halves natural log 2 pi mkt over h squared plus natural log of v over n. So m is the mass of an individual O2 molecule, kb Boltzmann constant t temperature, h squared is Planck's constant squared, v is the volume of the system, and n is the number of particles. So you may wonder where we're going to get volume and number of particles here because I didn't specify either of those. But what I did specify is the pressure of the system. And we know that for an ideal gas, which this translational partition function is assuming that we have an ideal gas, we know that the pressure times the volume equals number of moles times gas constant times temperature. PV equals nRT if we have an ideal gas. And from up here we saw that NK equals nR, so PV equals NKT. So we rearrange that, we get V over N equals KT over P. So what I'm going to do is replace this natural log of V over N with natural log of KT over P. Now the unit of, of P is important here because if I'm using SI units for everything else, kilograms, joule per kelvin, kelvin, joule seconds, uh, meters cubed, uh, no unit for number of particles. If I'm using uh, SI units for everything, pressure needs to be in pascals. So one bar is 10 to the fifth or 100,000 pascals. For the rotational part, for a diatomic molecule, uh, S bar rote over R is going to be one plus the natural log of the temperature over the symmetry number times the rotational temperature. For homonuclear diatomics like O2, the symmetry number is 2, and for heteronuclear diatomics it's 1, and for polyatomic uh, molecules it's more complicated to figure out what sigma is. Theta rote is the rotational temperature, which we can either compute from the rotational constants or we can just look up in a table. The vibrational entropy uh, molar vibrational entropy divided by R is equal to the vibrational temperature, once again a quantity that we can look up in a table, divided by T times E to the theta vib over T minus 1 uh, taken, to the, taken to the power minus 1, so 1 over this quantity. I just didn't have room to write out a lot of things, as you can probably tell from this slide. Plus the natural log of 1 minus E to the minus theta V over T. 
All right, and then lastly, we have the electronic molar entropy. S bar elec over the gas constant is equal to the natural log of the degeneracy of the ground state. So for most molecules, this is a singlet, and it ends up being 0. An ln of 1 is 0. But for O2, it ends up being 3, a triplet, so we do get electronic entropy. For most standard organic molecules, we don't get any electronic entropy. Okay, so we just need to take our values that are specific to oxygen and substitute them into this equation. All right, so for O2, we have 32 grams per mole is the mass of it, so we would convert that to kilograms of a single particle in SI units to substitute that in there. The rotational temperature is 2.07 Kelvin, which we get from the rotational constant, or we can look it up in a table. The, the vibrational temperature is 2,256 Kelvin. The symmetry number, as I mentioned, is 2, because it's a homonuclear diatomic. And the ground state is a triplet, so the degeneracy of it is equal to 3. All right, so starting off with the easiest, the molar electronic entropy is R, 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin, times the natural log of 3, which gives us 9.134 joules per mole Kelvin. All right, moving on to the vibrational entropy, we have theta vib over T, which is a quantity that shows up a lot here, as you can see. Pre-computing that for convenience, that's 2256 Kelvin over 298.15 Kelvin equals 7.5667. All right, so our S vib bar is equal to R 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin times 7.5667 times e to the 7.5 minus 1 to the minus 1 plus natural log of 1 minus e to the minus 7.5667. So when we take that all into account and compute that, you get that the vibrational entropy is 0 0.0369 joules per mole Kelvin. Notice that this is very close to 0, but not exactly 0, because for uh, these kind of vibrational temperatures, most of the system, probably 95, 98, 99% of the molecules are in the ground vibrational state. So there isn't a lot of energy distribution going on between vibrational levels. Almost everything is in the ground state, but there is a tiny, tiny bit of things populating maybe the second or, or third state. So we do get a tiny little bit of entropy from that distribution of energy. So 0 0.0369 joules per mole Kelvin. Then for the rotational molar entropy, 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin times 1 plus the natural log of 298.15 Kelvin over 2, the symmetry number, times the rotational temperature, 2.07 Kelvin. That gives me a final value of 43.875 joules per mole Kelvin. Notice it's much, much more than the vibrational entropy. It's bigger than the electronic entropy. Uh, the biggest contribution is going to be from translations, but rotations does have a very significant contribution as well. So notice that it's got a 1 out there, the translations has a 5 halves, and then there's whatever contribution comes from the rest of the stuff, whereas all of these are things that are generally pretty close to 0. Okay, and then <clears throat> the last part, the most complicated part, translations, 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin times 5 halves plus 3 halves, log 2 pi, 32 grams per mole times converting this into the proper units, 10 to the minus third kilograms per gram, and 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, per mole. So this is just getting this into atomic mass units, or getting into, into how many kilograms is a single particle of oxygen. However you'd like to do that, you may do so. All right, K, 1.30806 times 10 to the minus 23 joule per Kelvin, T, 298.15 Kelvin, and then Planck's constant squared, 6.6261 times 10 to the minus 34 squared joule seconds quantity squared. Then we have plus the natural log of V over N gets replaced with KT over P. Uh, the value of K was right there, value of T is right there, no room to write it divided by 100,000 pascals, which is a newton per meter squared. 
All right, so when you uh, chug your way through all of that, the result that you get is the molar translational entropy for oxygen at 298 Kelvin and one bar is 152.08 joules per mole Kelvin. So as I said, most of it comes from translations. Notice how this is about three times bigger than that. This is about three times bigger than that. So most of it is coming from translational energies. There's many, many, many occupied translational energies at, at 200, 300 Kelvin. There's uh, several dozen rotational energies levels that are occupied. Almost, almost no vibrational energies that are occupied. Uh, energy levels that are occupied, and then three electronic levels that are occupied giving us that. So the final result is that we sum up these four uh, contributions, if I can find them all, this one, that one, that one, and that one. And that gives us the total molar entropy for O2 at 298 Kelvin in one bar is equal to 205.13 joules per mole Kelvin as predicted by the partition functions from statistical mechanics. So what's very interesting about this is that if you look at the experimental molar entropy of O2 under these conditions, which is something you could obtain from calorimetry or a variety of other experimental techniques, you'll get the value 205.2 joules per mole Kelvin. And this is interesting because that's very, very accurate. We're accurate within, you know, about 0.1% here, that one part per thousand for something that's a honestly a fairly crude model. We had, we're using the rigid rotor approximation, harmonic oscillator approximation, ideal gas approximation. Lots of approximations went into computing this value, but it ended up being a very accurate result. So that's just a very interesting that you get a value that's so accurate for what is using statistical mechanics a, a somewhat simplistic and a simplified model giving you a quite a good correspondence to the physical reality.